Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're taking a look at the Tier 7 Uganda. This is the new Commonwealth Tier 7 cruiser. And I typically don't go this low, at least when it comes to uh, new lines. I like to stay at Tier 8, Tier 9, and Tier 10. I find them just more interesting. But my first game in this ship was so good that I just have to share it with you guys. It's also an interesting breakpoint in the line because this ship gets 150 millimeter guns, 152s, whatever it is. The important point is they're smaller caliber than the higher tier ones that have 203s. So that means we have worse pen and also shell velocity. But we gained a little bit of reload here. This ship is also going to be buffed compared to what you see here. I have a 7.1 second reload, something like that, and it's going down to 6.6. .6. That should already be in the game though, as these ships have probably released already by the time you get to see this video. But these ships are pretty solid, honestly. I was kind of thinking they'd be just mediocre cruisers, but I, the more I've played them, the more I like them. Outside of the tier 10, that is. <laughs> yeah, the tier 10's a little rough, but I think the tier 9 is definitely the high point of this line, and uh, the tier 7 and 8 are also very, very solid. The damage is decent, and this smoke is amazing for just holding your ground and applying a lot of pressure to enemy ships. It's really interesting to have a cruiser that can just kind of stay at closer ranges to battleships and just a lot of the enemy team. Most of the time you're either playing around islands, which we kind of are here, um, but or you're forced to kite away and play pretty far back. But these ships can play at medium to close range when they have their smoke available. So they're actually rather aggressive cruisers, interestingly enough. At least when it comes to having your smoke available to you. Once it's gone, of course, you do need to play much more passive. Since you do have light cruiser armor, it's very, very bad. And you're going to get citadel a lot. So you do want to play around islands, but you can use island cover to get close. And then use your smoke to play more open water for a little bit. And apply a lot of damage and a lot of pressure. Also playing closer like this, we have that option of using our submarine surveillance and hoping to deal with enemy subs. It's not great at it. I'm not going to rant about it here. I'm not sure when the Cerberus video is coming out, whether it's before or after this one, but there's a big old rant at the end of that one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll leave that video with the rant and uh, we'll just keep moving on. Just know that I don't think the uh, sub surveillance is that good and that these cruisers are not great at dealing with subs, much like every other class isn't really great at dealing with subs. I really did like this uh, this line, though, the more I played it. These smaller ships certainly helped a lot when you are a little bit more maneuverable, but also just not having the massive freeboard that can just be HE penned and bigger citadels, that kind of thing. It's much, much easier to play this line when you don't have such a massive hull like you do at the tier 10. That's really why I think the tier nine is the high point is because it's small still, but it gains a lot of DPM and range. Something interesting though, is you don't actually have a heal here when it comes to the Uganda at uh, tier seven. I was kind of expecting to have one. I'm not sure why, I guess maybe I thought because this line had heals at tier eight, Maybe it was a little more like the British light cruiser line, something like that, where we have heals more often, but it's kind of unfortunate to not have a heal because our maneuverability is still not great here on this ship. You do not have that BG level acceleration and maneuverability, even though it looks like a Fiji uh, at tier seven here. So you do need to be very, very careful in this thing. And much like every other ship in this line, once people know how squishy they are and how clumsy they are, you're probably gonna get shot at a lot more than I did in this uh, early access period. But we do have some decent range here. It's hard to lead at these ranges. <laughs> you're gonna see I miss quite a lot over this game, but you have really nice range that allows you to do a lot of damage into battleships specifically. You're not gonna hit cruisers or DDs that reliably at these ranges, but with our decent fire chance here, we should be getting some good damage in. I'm not running IFHE also. Uh, that's something that I don't think you should run on this ship or really many of these smaller caliber cruisers at this tier because IFHE is useful at allowing you to full pen different armor thresholds, right? So here with this ship, we pen 25 millimeters of armor base. It would allow us to pen 26, which is good against our own tier enemy battleships, um, getting up over that 26 millimeters of armor we typically see but we don't get to 32 millimeters of armor pen here using IFHE on these guns at tier seven. So it's 
a little bit unfortunate when you get those up tiers and then you just sacrificed your fire chance and then you didn't really get much benefit out of it. So that's why I don't really like it at tier eight. At higher tiers though, the uh, 152 calibers, 150, 152, whatever, at different uh, lines and tech trees, they get 30 millimeters of pen. So then IFHE can get you up over 32 millimeters and then it can be useful, not always. We landed two Torps, very, very lucky on this Buccioni. Uh, this was a little bit of a scary fight to walk into. You notice my team is just kind of left, uh, but you need to clear the flank uh, before we go deal with the enemy team on the other side. Uh, especially a DD on the flank would be terrifying, and bujani has got some really good guns, especially if they can use some island cover. It would have been a bit of a disaster for our team to get pincered, so I got very lucky to land those Torps, otherwise this would have been a much more difficult fight. Would have been a little easier with a heal. Fortunately, though, the Akatsuki doesn't have the best concealment at this tier, so we are able to take him out. Hydro is down, though, so a little bit worried about torpedoes coming in. And we do manage to dodge two sets, and there's the third, so we're okay. But no Hydro, clumsy light cruiser. Yeah, it's a little scary against DDs at times. Definitely want to have that Hydro activated. 90k damage and a Kraken already. That's a pretty good game for a first match in the Uganda here. I think this is going to be a pretty decent line to play, actually. Uh, somebody was think asking me if this would be a good line for regrinds. Like, if you don't have a ton of free XP to do the Harugamo gimmick, where you just use free XP to constantly reset the Harugamo line, as that is the cheapest one to do. Uh, this might be an interesting line. If you're interested in light cruisers, HE farmers, that kind of thing, you kind of vibe with this this line a little bit it could be a really solid line to grind with because i mean the tier 10 being strong with guns like i said in that video with cerberus but weak in every other way uh, and the tier 9 being a pretty high point of the line in my opinion makes it an interesting option for regrinds so we'll have to see but if you're interested in light cruisers heavy cruisers smoke fire cruisers that kind of thing uh it could be good it could be good for you Notice how I'm just missing here. That is just purely down to miss aiming and having a difficult time with these very floaty shells. But our last salvo that does connect does light a fire. It's pretty lucky for us. Uh, unfortunately, these 150s give you a little bit of a different experience throughout the line, uh, switching from these lower caliber cruiser guns to higher caliber ones, 203s, as we get up to the uh, tier eight, nine and 10. It's a little bit awkward to transition there, I guess, because uh, you do have that slower reload, but better shell velocity and better damage output per shell. It's just a weird thing to deal with, I guess. Um, certainly isn't the easiest if it's your first cruiser line. Probably this shouldn't be your first cruiser line, I don't think, just because they're so clumsy uh, compared to some other cruisers. I think you will die rather quickly, but there is some power here. Six kills now admittedly kind of yoinked that one a bit of a kill steal on that uh d the farragut there but i am he has to die eventually so i guess we uh, will take it and uh now dealing with this new orleans we have to angle uh the ap is terrifying on these american uh cruisers at this mid and high tier so we can't get greedy for that rear gun the angles are just okay on the rear gun they're not amazing it's really only meant for you to use it at times where you're not getting shot at or you're in your smoke or something like that, I think. Otherwise, it's okay to just use your bow guns. That should be just fine. And we should take him out here. Dodge that last AP salvo. He shouldn't be overmatching us anyway. So 121,000 damage and seven kills is a pretty good carry for a tier seven boat. Uh, not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, no healing here, a little rough. And notice we only had 226,000 potential damage. <laughs> These ships don't like to get shot at, man. They really, really don't. Uh, so you're going to have to use your concealment and use island cover and use your smokes to get into positions where you can shoot but not get shot back at. That's kind of going to be the key to this line. And I really like that that play style remains consistent as you go through the line. Even if the guns do change in caliber and shell velocity reload, all that stuff, at least the way you're going to play the ship seems to remain the same. And unfortunately, the tier 10 seems to be uh, one of the most extreme versions of it, where it's squishier as well as does more damage than the rest. As for the build here on the tier 7, in that game, I only had a 14 point commander to use. So that's all I had. Um, as for the upgrades here, I think pretty standard for this line. Definitely going propulsion mod here since we do need that. 
we're oftentimes pretty slow in our smoke, so we sometimes need to dodge Torp, speed up a little bit. And then uh, to deal with that lack of rudder shift time, at least in the higher tier ones, that Lighthouse build starts to come into play. That might not be the easiest way to play it for you. Um, it might be better to run the concealment, allow you to get to, into better positions, but uh, that's what I found to work best for me. Going full damage here, as you can see. Grease the gears is required here. I mean, these are 152s and they have a 26 second turret traverse. Uh, it's kind of bad. So we do need that. And that's with Grease the gears, by the way. That's rough. Um, demo expert here, as well as heavy HE and top grade gunner, trying to maximize that reload as much as we can. The uh, reload here is updated as uh, it is Wednesday. So the patch did just drop. So now I can see the updated reload here. It was worse when I was playing it in this game. So what you saw, it's gonna be a little bit better then. AR of course, as well as consumable specialist here. That was the 14 point commander build. And then uh, after that, I'd probably, once we get a heal, it's more important to get superintendent, I think. And then I'm not sure what else I would do. You could go concealment maybe. Um, eventually if you get a 21 point commander at higher tiers but i went full damage it might be a little too much a little too hard to play around considering these ships are a little bit squishy with that full damage build so running more defensive things if you are struggling to survive is more than fine to do but yeah big citadels easy to hit not the most maneuverability can be tough but the damage is there the damage is certainly there with this line and the tier 7 played pretty well gotta say uh, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.